Okay, so here we are with lesson nine. Uh, nine uh, being a deeper dive into the restaurant ordering process, but our agenda here clearly is going to cover some part of the culture. And today we're going to be talking about the Der Stuhl Peter and other sweet, wholesome bedtime stories. Uh, we will talk about the professional vocabulary review. We will then go into some new professional vocabulary for medical professionals, and we'll be talking about basic anatomy. Then we'll go into our foundational vocabulary, and then we will have our dining out deep dive. So this should be an awful lot of fun, but going straight to our culture corner, <clears throat> we have der Stuhl Peter, which literally means shaggy Peter. And this is a collection of stories uh, that was written back in 1845, 1850, somewhere in that range, um, by a psychiatrist here in Germany who wrote them for his son um, because, you know, he had a small son and wanted him to have something memorable. And then he went and published them so that the rest of the world could be inflicted as well. And so... If you're familiar at all with uh, Grimm's fairy tales, etc., the the various German fairy tales that have kind of incorporated, if if not populated our world for many many years, you'll know that they can be kind of dark at times, right? I mean, just think of Hansel and Gretel, you know, and throwing, being thrown into an oven, and the, the big bad wolf eating you, and uh, your grandmother. I mean, it's just, it's crazy stuff. But Der Strudel Peter, the Shaggy Peter. He's a different character altogether because there's really not much of a story about him in the classic fairy tale book that I was raised on by my Oma and Mutti. But um, uh, to essentially, to, to make it so, it was he was a bad kid. Er was ein böses Kind. And that's the German for a bad kid. Because he wouldn't cut his nails. And if you look at this image over here on the slide, to the left, clearly he has very long nails and he has really crazy hair. Um, you know, he's just not very well kept. And if you look at close-ups of him, he looks to be about 57 years old, but he's supposed to be a teenager. Now, this image in the middle is of Der Schneider. And Der Schneider is going after this kid because he sucks his thumbs. The long and short of the story, the kid's sucking his thumbs, and his mother says, I'm going to the store, something like this, right? You know, uh, when I, you better not be sucking your thumbs when I get back because, you know, you'll, you'll have hell to pay. Well, he does. As soon as his mother leaves for the store, he starts to suck his thumbs, and Miss Schneider, this gigantic tailor, comes running out of the closet and cuts his thumbs off. Uh, you can't make this stuff up. And then, of course, we have Pauline Scher here down on the far right, uh, who is... Uh, well, she plays with matches, and she's got these two cats that are really concerned for her, if you can see from the illustration there. Uh, and then there's nothing left of her, right? So almost cleanly done as if spontaneous combustion. But regardless, some pretty gruesome fairy tales. And um, we all laugh about that because it is kind of funny. I mean, it is a funny thing. Um, you know, just these really, really dark fairy tales for a culture that loves children more than I can think of any other. You wouldn't believe the parks and the places that they build for children here in Germany. It is, it is just so child-friendly. I've never seen a mother in Germany uh, in, in all my time here, right, which we're, we're going into, well, we're over three years, and I can tell you I've never seen it. I've never seen a German a mother or a German father be mean to their children. It's uh, you know, every day back in, uh, in, back in Texas at the HEB or if you just have to go into Walmart to get a garden hose or you know, whatever golf balls and, and, and you'll see somebody getting their rear end worn out, right? Um, but it's rare if ever seen here in Germany because they love their children. But if you go back and consider the fairy tales, <laughs> it makes you wonder. It's not like the English have a better track record. After all, you know, ring around a rosy, ring a ring a rosy, you know, and you know the the whole thing, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. I mean, it's all dark, right? I mean, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray, my Lord. I mean, if I die before I wake, I mean, I get it. Things were a little bit darker in the past, but there's just something about being told about uh, the tailor, the uh, Endechungs, um, um Schneiderheil, you know, coming out of the closet and chopping your thumbs off with a huge pair of scissors because you were sucking your thumbs. It, 
seems a bit excessive, maybe to some people a bit enthusiastic. Regardless of where you stand with this, it is pretty interesting. Okay, so let's move into our professional vocabulary view. I am a doctor. Ich bin ein Arzt. Remember, A-R-Z-T. Every one of those letters gets pronounced in Deutsch. Ich bin ein Arzt. I am a nurse. Ich bin ein Krankenschwester. Schwester. I'm a medical technician. Ich bin Medizintechniker. Where are you hurt? Wo sind Sie verletzt? Please remain still. Bitte bleiben Sie still. Still. You'll see that the English still is the same as the German still, but you'll want to pronounce it correctly. So, bitte bleiben Sie still. They're going to understand you, but why force it? Bitte bleiben Sie still. Please lie flat. Bitte legen Sie sich flach hin. And remember what I was talking about? Gordo, gorda, flaco, flaca. Yeah, obviously a Latin derivative. Okay, so going into uh, the first of two slides of professional vocabulary in basic anatomy, a head is a kopf. Kopf. That's K O P F, and they're all, again, pronounced. You enunciate each letter individually. Kopf. A neck, Nachen. Shoulders, Schulter. Or shoulder, Schulter. Shoulders, Schultern. Back, der Rücken. Now, for my military friends out there watching this, we've all heard of a rucksack. We've been carrying them since, uh, I don't know, time immemorial in the United States and English armies. But if you try to write rucksack out in Microsoft Word, it is going to give you a red squiggly line because it's not a word according to them. Uh, it is, we get rucksack from German and it is a common term, but yet English does not recognize it, uh, especially in the dictionaries. So keep it in mind. So the back where your rucksack would go is der Rücken. Spine. Die Wirbelsäule. Wirbelsäule. Crazy word, I know, but when you see that AU together at the end with the umlaut on the A, it becomes an OI sound. Why that's not an EU, I cannot explain that. Have no idea. It's just Wirbelsäule. In your stomach, Magen. Now, we know how to say, I like this. Ich mag. Das, ich mag das, M-A-G. Magen is a stomach. My guess here is that I can stomach this, considering the German personality as a collective. Maybe that's it. So I like this means I can stomach it, because if after all, if I, ich, if, if, ich, ich mag das, and then my stomach is magen, I think I'm on to something. So hips are hüften, hüften. Remember that U with the umlaut? That's a sound that we just don't make in English. Hüften. A thigh is ein Schenkel. Schenkel, which sounds like there's a cankle joke in there somewhere. Um, knee. Now, let's remember our cardinal rule. Every single letter gets pronounced. So therefore, a knee is a knie. Because we're going to pronounce that K. <laughs> An ankle, knurkel, knurkel is an ankle. And a heel, hake, your foot, fuß, and your toes are sehen, sehen. And uh, from a knie to sehen, uh, if we have any aspiring uh, German podiatrists out there, American podiatrists who want to become German podiatrists, learn those words. You might need them. We know. The knee down, got it. So let's go back to our foundational vocabulary review. Our basics, the review is house and home is house and zu Hause. Internet, in. Car, auto. Already, schon. Good morning, guten Morgen. How are you? Wie geht es Ihnen? Wie geht es dir? Where are you from? Woher sind Sie? Woher bist du? Me? Mir, mich. Hello, hallo, guten Tag. 
Be careful on the hello. It's so different. What is your name? Uh, was ist dein Name? How old are you? Wie alt sind Sie? Formal. Wie alt bist du? Informal. Son, Sohn, Daughter, Tochter, Your. Informal. Deinem, Dein, Deine. Formal. Ihr, Ihre. Very. Sehr. Hard. Hot. Difficult. Hard. Schwierig. Still. Noch. And into our new words for the week, the words that we must, we must, we must memorize in order to get to our 16-week advantage of becoming fully conversational. Trust me as a linguist and a rhetorician, I've got your back on this, but you've got to spend each week memorizing these foundational vocabulary basics, okay? So thank you, danke Ihnen, or danke dir, for, für, a, ein, or eine, right? Depending on whether it's masculine or feminine. We know from our definite articles, right? That uh, dein, deine, right? Uh, der, die. We know that ein is masculine and eine is feminine. And it depends on the gender of the noun. This is das ist. Time. Zeit, but or however is aber, aber, no, not, nein, nicht. I am not. Ich bin nicht. Away, weit, or weg. Moving on to our second set of uh, foundational vocabulary basics, we have that which is das. Oder das. Yeah, one's got two S's, one's got one. Just go with it. This is basic German. You can get into the complexities later. Similar. Remember this A with the umlaut. I always harp on this. I want to make sure we kind of drill it into the heads to kind of create an automatic mnemonic device. Similar. A with the umlaut is an E sound. The short vowel E. So similar is ähnlich. Ähnlich. Other, another becomes andere or ein andere. Virtually interchangeable for right now. A side of something is a Zeite. Zeite, like the side of a building is ein Zeite. Zeite. Until, bis. Yesterday, gestern. Gestern. Without us, ohne uns, since, Zeit, day, Tag, Tag, and before becomes vorher or vor dem. Now, let's go ahead and move into our actual phrases. Thanks for everything. Danke für alles. Danke für alles. It's almost time. Es ist fast Zeit. Es ist fast Zeit. I am not here. I am away. Ich bin nicht hier. Ich bin weg. Ich bin nicht hier. Ich bin weg. That is a similar house. Das ist ein ähnliches Haus. Das ist ein ähnliches Haus. I am from the other side. Ich bin von der anderen Seite. Ich bin von der anderen Seite. But I was here until late yesterday. Aber ich war hier bis spät gestern. Aber ich war hier bis spät gestern. Since the other day, seit dem anderen Tag, seit dem anderen Tag, and now, we will get right into our restaurant deep dive. And what I've got here is a picture that I took of a restaurant menu at a place called the Brauhaus am Markt. It's about 50 meters from my flat and it has the best uh, sauerkraut, the best Weisse Wurst. Uh, my gosh, get the Wurstteller with the 
the voice teller with with the sauerkraut and tell him to hold the uh, the mashed potatoes it's fabulous right but anyway we're gonna look at this menu and as you can see here from the goofy little magnifying glass that i conjured up we're going to go into it each step of the way and kind of look at it and i want to ask the question so going to the first of that menu breaking it down piece by piece it says mittags tish what does mittags tish mean mit tag mit tag what does that mean well we know it means afternoon and a tish we know means a table so mit tags tish must be something to do with a lunch table and that's exactly it it's a lunch table right so a mit tags tish is the lunch table now going into this the mo here stands for the day of the week which is come on spit it out montag monday and here we're having gegrillte Brustwurst in zitronensauce mit zucchini gemüse und wild rice um and then we also have a bunter blattsalat dazu siegenkäse aus dem offen now, if you read it out loud and knowing the, 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 the vocabulary and the pronunciation and the alphabet like you do, you might be able to pick out that this is a grilled something, grilled breast, but what is Putin besides an absolute douchebag from Russia? Well, that's a turkey. Turkey, Putin is turkey. So we have grilled turkey breast in a lemon sauce. So don't say you want limon uh, limon is actually a lime. You want zitrone, which is a lemon. So think of that citrus sauce, right? That zitrone sauce, that's lemon sauce with a zucchini gemüse. So uh, a zucchini, you know, vegetable mix with wildreis. Wildreis is wild rice. You can see it because so much of our native language is based on German. Now, a uh, bunte Blattsalat, right? This might have something to do with some mixed greens, right? You know, um, dazu, dazu means uh, comes with uh, Ziegen Kiese. Now, I don't know how many folks uh, are in here that are beer drinkers from America, but Budweiser came out with a horrible beer a few years back called Ziegenbach. And it had the head of a goat on the uh, label, kind of like Scheinerbach. It's just trying to, I don't know, steal something. Um, but Ziegen means goat, right? So Ziegen Käse aus dem Ofen, Ofen looks a lot like an oven, right? So you have this mixed green salad uh, that comes with uh, <clears throat> a goat cheese or, a, you know, a, like, like a goat cheese out of the oven, right? So <clears throat> the actual definition, right, would be a grilled turkey breast and lemon sauce with zucchini and wild rice colorful leaf salad with goat cheese from the oven it's not hard to make these things out but you've got to familiarize yourself with each term now <clears throat> on di that's short for tuesday which is dienstag we have <clears throat> hinschenschnekel in zwiebelsauce dazu spätzle und salad so we have hinschen Henschen Schenkel, Schenkel. And we just talked about the anatomy a few seconds ago, right? You know, I uh, said so there might be a cankle joke in there, so I'm kind of giving you like an automatic mnemonic device. But it looks like we're going to have chicken thighs in an onion sauce with uh, Spätzle, which are little dumplings, and salad. Uh, the other option here is penne which is, of course, pasta, uh, well-known, uh, made and invented or whatever in Italy. Bunten Gemüse in Parmesan sauce. So, what do we got? We have chicken thighs and onion sauce with spätzle and salad, and then we have penne with mixed vegetables and a Parmesan sauce. If you're tracking right along with me, then you're doing awesome. Now, the MI stands for Mittwoch which is Wednesday, Mittwoch. Mittag is the middle of the day. Mittwoch is the middle of the week. And here we have Pouladenbrust. Pouladen. If you grew up on a farm, you might know what a pullet is. 
if you had any sort of zoology class or ever been to a zoo, you might know what a pullet is, right? <clears throat> I guess like unmarried virgin chicken or something, whatever. But a pullet is a pullet. And so a pouladen prost, right? In Ramsos, uh, da zoo, da zoo comes with pommes frites und salat. Wurziges Kartoffel, Paprika, Goulash, Dazu, frisches Baguette. So, what do we have here? Some sort of, uh, we have some sort of, uh, you know, like a, a hen's breast, a chicken breast in, in Ram sauce. So, you know, the, the local uh, hunter sauce, the Jaeger sauce, or Ram sauce. It's creamy and delicious. Uh, I think it's got a beef uh, stock base or a bone broth base. A bone broth base. Dazu pommes frites, which is French fries, and salat. And I think we know what salat is. Now, we go here to Kartoffel, Paprika, Goulash. Kartoffel, these are potatoes. Paprika is pepper, and goulash is a goulash. It's a stew, but it's a goulash, right? Uh, we have them in the United States. We have them all over the world. They're, they originate out of Hungary, which is why they have paprika in there, because the Hungarians love paprika. And that's fine. Some of the best goulash in the world, despite who their actual president is right now, is the most delicious thing on the planet. So we might have some spicy uh, potato pepper goulash, uh, and it comes with a fresh baguette. Let's take a look. So chicken breast in a cream sauce with french fries and salads, spicy potato and paprika goulash with a fresh baguette. Yes, it's that easy. It's that easy to get to these menus. You've just got to commit to understanding and finding the similarities. Remember, if you speak English, you really kind of speak French and German already. Just keep that in mind in its own way. Now, here we have D-O, and that's for Thursday, and that's Donestag, which we've covered. But <clears throat> look at this first word. Deftische, deftische, or deftige, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Deft. Think when someone's deft. They're kind of brawny, kind of tough, right? Um, <clears throat> that's a deft individual. He's deft at his PT test. Think of it that way. Then we have Wurstchen. Eintopf mit Kartoffeln und Gemüse. Now, an Eintopf means a one pot. It means a one pot. So you can generally, uh, you can translate that to a stew. So, deftische, hearty. Um, Wurstchen, so kind of a, a hearty sausage stew with uh, potatoes and vegetables. Or you can get the spaghetti Napoli mit frischem Parmesan. And that's just Napoli's spaghetti with fresh Parmesan, right? Let's take a look. Again, hearty sausage stew with potatoes and vegetables with also, or your other choice on Donna's tag here, is spaghetti Napoli with fresh Parmesan. It's pretty simple stuff. Now, here on Freitag, we have Meersfrüchte, Meersfrüchte in Rieslingsauce da zu Tagliatelle. And we all know what Tagliatelle is. Meersfrüchte, what is that though? Meersfrüchte. Um, well, it, it means fruit of the sea. And it might sound like it's just seafood. And that's how it translates. But just know, it'll have yummy stuff like shrimp and crab and my favorite mussels. But it will also come with squid and octopus. So keep that in mind. I can't eat that stuff. If it's got a tentacle, I've decided I just don't like it. The other piece of this is the Flammküchen mit Schafskäse, Zucchini und Thymian. Now, Flammküchen, if you've been out and about, you know that that's pizza. But it might mean something different, right? I think it actually means flame cake, if we're being honest. But it's a German or a French pizza. That's what they call them, Flammküchen. Mit Schafskäse. Now, Schafs, Schaf. We know what Käse is, we know what cheese is, but what's a schaf? Well, think sheep, right? And when you're thinking about milk from a ewe and made into a cheese, that's how we get feta. Uh, and of course, I think we understand the word zucchini and tumian is of course thyme. The actual seafood in a Riesling sauce, which is a wine sauce, by the way, and a Riesling is a young wine. <clears throat> It's either sweet or dry. They come in Tolkien or Zeus. 
and with tagliatelle, which is, of course, the, the pasta. Now, <clears throat> Flammkuchen directly translates into tart flambe, but it's not. It's better translated into German pizza with feta cheese, zucchini, and thyme. And again, Flammkuchen means flame cake, which is kind of fun to think that you're having a flame cake. It's a little bit, well, a little bit more like cutting off thumbs for, you know, sucking them, whatnot. Okay, and our last menu item here is Samstag. The SA stands for Saturday, Samstag. And we're having Rindfleisch, Eintopf mit Bohnen und Kartoffeln, dazu frisches Spaghetti. Oder we're having halbes Grillhähnchen mit Pommes frites und Salat. Now let's go through the, each one of these pieces, one piece at a time. Rindfleisch. Rind is a cow, it's beef. Fleisch, literally meat, flesh. Eintopf, now we know that's a one pot, that's a stew, right? Mit Bohnen, Bohnen. And outside of a rather dark uh, modifier, if not metaphor from the Midwest to describe a, you know, a relationship with somebody, Bohnen <coughs> is actually beans. Und Kartoffeln, we know, are potatoes, and it comes with a fresh baguette. So if you're on a keto diet, be careful of this one. Now, halbes, halbes means half, half. Grill, we know what a grill is. Hinchen, we know that's chicken. So maybe half a grilled chicken with uh, french fries and a salad. So let's see, we've got beef stew with beans and potatoes with a fresh baguette. Half a grilled chicken with French fries and salad. So there you have it. This is the menu at uh, you know Brauhaus am Markt, and you too can get right through it and figure it out as you go. Next week we are going next to Volcha. We are going to do more restaurants and dining out to make us more proficient as we order. Perhaps we need to figure out how to ask for the check again. Perhaps we need to figure out how to uh, to do a tip. Perhaps we need to go through more menus and more selections, including appetizers, etc. So we will make that happen, and let's do that. Until then, be well, be safe, and practice your HRO principles. High reliability, on the road to zero harm. Cheers.